Today is the very first working day of this new year 2023 and I wish you all a very happy new year. I hope you learned a lot in the previous year and want to accelerate your learning in this new year as well. More and more newcomers are joining the world of Microsoft Azure Cloud with so many websites, hundreds and thousands of YouTube videos such a mind-boggling volume of information can sometimes hamper your efficient learning. There is so much noise on the resources available on the internet. So what should you do? How can you get the latest and the greatest updates in Microsoft Azure so that you are not left behind in the learning curve? We will find answer to this question in this very video. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this video, I want to share some of the resources that will help you to stay updated on Microsoft Azure. But why it is so important? Well, when it comes to the technology, early movers have the greatest benefit. The earlier and more updated you are, you will always stay ahead of the competition. So let's dive in. The very first resource I've got for you is this Azure Updates website. So what exactly is this website and how can you use it? Well, first of all, this is the official Microsoft website. So one thing for sure is that any information that you get on this website is official and legit. Now, according to Microsoft, Azure updates are point in time or release notes announcements about Azure products features, APIs and tools. These includes item under development, previews, general availability, retirements and event information. A website that every Azure learner must have in their browser's bookmark. Now, first of all, you can see that all the updates are listed in a chronological order. Here, it's very important to note that the status for each update is also given. You can see the status for every update here. And in total, there are three status. The first one is now available. The second one is in preview and the third one is in development. Now, before we move ahead, it's very important that you understand all these three different statuses. Why? You will understand the reason behind the same as we move ahead in this video. The first status is now available or better known as generally available or also called GA in short form. We then have in preview status, which is further divided in private preview and public preview. And finally, we have in development status. Now let's quickly understand the details of each of these status. So the in preview status, as I just mentioned, is further divided into private preview and public preview. So let's understand the private preview first. And this one says that during this phase, we invite a few customers to take part in early access to new concepts and features. This phase does not include formal support. And friends, please mind it. This we written here is actually referring to Microsoft Azure. Moving ahead with the public preview and this one says that during this phase, we allow any customer with the proper Azure AD license to evaluate new feature. Microsoft customer support services will supply support services during this phase, but normal service level agreements do not apply. So basically, Microsoft is warning you that the normal SLA will not apply during the public preview. Coming up next is now available or generally available. This one says that after the public preview is completed, the feature is now open for any licensed customer to use and is supported via all Microsoft support channels. And here comes a quick warning from Microsoft that please be aware when a new feature impacts existing functionality, it might change the way you or your users use that functionality. And finally, we have in development. Well, I think this status is quite self-explanatory. Any feature that is still in development comes under this status. And now an important disclaimer from Microsoft themselves. Remember that you shall never use a non-GA services and features for production workloads. The purpose of private and public preview is only for the evaluation purposes. Except for the lack of SLA and formal support, there might be other issues that were not yet discovered or fixed. So please always use features and services that are generally available. 
Hopefully, now you understand why I said that it's very important to understand the meaning of all these statuses. Okay, so I'm back again on this website, Azure Updates. I want to give you more information on the features of this website. The first cool feature of this website is that you can search any feature or services based on its status. For example, let's say that you only want to see the services or features that are now available. So you have to click on this filter and then you click this filter results. And once you do this, you will be only seeing the services and features that are now on the general availability status. And of course, you can change the filter. Maybe you want to see only the in preview or in development features and services. And then what you can also do is you can directly search a service. For example, let's say that we are interested to get the update on Azure Arc service. So you can directly search for Azure Arc and now Microsoft will show you all the updates that are related to this Azure Arc. Okay, so what else you can do? Well, on this website, you can also search features or product by their category. So let's say that you are very interested to know what is happening in the world of Internet of Things. So you can just select this Internet of Things and then you can click on this filter results. And now once again, Microsoft will filter out all the latest happening in the world of Internet of Things. What's more, you can also filter out the information based on this update type. So for example, if you are interested to know what is happening in the world of regions and data centers, then you click on to this filter here and then filter results. Similarly, for example, let's say that you are interested now in compliance, then you have to select compliance and then you say filter results. Now you will be presented with all the information which comes under the category of compliance. And once again, let me reset the filter. Here it goes. Now I have reset the filter. Once again, I want to inform you that all the information on this website by default is given in a chronological order. For example, you can see the last update that we have is on December the 15th. You can click on any of this feature and then you will be presented with all the information related to that feature or service. And friends, once again, I want to say you before using any feature or service, always keep the status in mind. The second resource that we have that will always help you to keep updated is Microsoft Azure blog. And here on this blog, you can find all the latest happening in Azure world. Here you can read the latest blog or you can also read based on the topics or based on some specific dates. Now you may ask what is the difference between Azure updates website that we just saw and this Azure blog. Well, as Microsoft says, Azure updates are brief point in time or release notes announcements. On the other hand, Azure blog, it features long form articles by Azure experts providing in-depth background and context on the Azure news and announcements. What really great about Azure updates and this blog site is that you can also subscribe to the RSS feed on both of them. The third resource that you can use to keep yourself updated is Azure Community Support. And you can see Microsoft says get developer and IT support for your Azure product questions. Also note that on top right here you can see there is a button which is called ask a question. If you click on this button, you will be enabled to ask a question from a community expert. Besides that, if you are interested in some particular category, let's say that we want to dig more or we want to see the question and answers that have been posted so far in the compute category. Click on this one and then you will reach to this compute category. Let's say that I select this Azure container instances. Click on this one. And here when this page opens, you can see all the questions that have been posted so far. You can also see the answers, the comments that have been linked to these questions. And now let's say that you are interested in some particular topic. You want to drill it further. Let's say we are interested in Docker. Let's search for Docker. Okay, this is the spelling mistake. Let me correct the spelling first. Here it goes. And now we can see all the questions that have been posted so far on the Docker subject. Let's say that we are interested in this one, Docker external port. Click on this one and here you can see what was the question asked. And if you scroll a little bit more, 
you can see what are the answers given by the community expert you can see it says community expert similarly there can be multiple answers to the same question as well so very useful site in case you have some doubts or questions you can traverse through this website and dig more around the subject you never know what you can find here now coming to the fourth resource and this one is for all those Twitter lovers. You can follow Microsoft Azure on Twitter and get the daily dose of latest and greatest in Microsoft Azure. On the number 5, this one is for the RSS feed fans. On this website, you can find the best top 100 RSS feeds on Microsoft Azure. A great resource for anyone who loves to consume RSS. How many of you know the full form of RSS? Let me know in the comment section. So those are the top 5 resources that you can use to always stay updated with the latest happening in Microsoft Azure. Well, amongst all these resources, there is one more resource and that is your own channel, The Tech Blackboard where we are in a continuous effort to bring the best learning in Microsoft Azure and also help you with the Azure certifications. I'm sure that you like the efforts in bringing all these top 5 resources in learning Microsoft Azure and always keeping up to date in this cloud world. By the way, what are your resources from where you are learning Microsoft Azure? Why don't you share all those resources in the comment section? This will be a great community service for all those who are learning Microsoft Azure. And before I close this video, I wish you all a very happy new year. Please consider subscribing to the channel and pressing that bell icon and we will be your partner in cloud learning for the times to come. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.